What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2015 Maserati Ghibli SQ4. Huge thanks to Jim for providing me with his awesome Maserati here to review for you guys today. Also, huge thanks to Auto Tempest for sponsoring this review. Auto Tempest is a website where you can search all the top car for sale sites in one place, and I'll show you more about how that works uh, whenever we get into the pricing of this car later on. So about the Maserati Ghibli, well, I just love the way these things look. It's just such a cool sedan. It's so awesome that Maserati is getting into the midsize uh, you know, sports sedan segment with the luxury uh, cars here, and it's uh, really beautiful looking. I love the unique styling they have with the you know uh, signature Maserati grille up front there, and it's just amazing how how much it droops down there in the front. It really looks like it's hunched over, like crouching, ready to attack with how low those headlights are and everything. And when, you, when you look at it in the side profile, you see just how low those headlights are. They're right there, you know, in like the middle of the tires and, uh, you know, that, that level. And it's pretty awesome how low it gets there in the front. But anyway, uh, coming down to the sides, very beautiful silhou silhouette. You have uh, these little, uh, porthole design uh, features here on the fender and then going out to the back I always love the Maserati emblem you have there on the rear quarter and the back end looks very nice too you have a nice little uh, spoiler there and the quad exhaust pipes and overall I think it's just a really good look. Right, so the interior of the 2015 Maserati Ghibli S. Well, it's very nice, as you would expect from, uh, you know, the awesome Italians, uh, Maserati. I mean, just all the leather and stuff uh, smells nice and uh, feels nice. But anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, uh, really nice seats here. Uh, so you've, uh, you know, just black leather, really great bolstering, though. I mean, the torso bolstering is uh, pretty sporty, and even the shoulder, like, uh, support is uh, actually uh, hugs you in a little bit. And I feel like if you had larger shoulders, it it might get in the way a little bit, but it's uh, just oddly placed bolstering, but it does feel very nice. And uh, overall, you know, makes for a very sporty seat, especially up top here. Thigh bolstering isn't quite as aggressive, um, but does feel pretty good as well. You know, they're nice and wide, so they accommodate all body types. Um, and overall, you know, they're a little bit on the firm side, but overall, they're a pretty nice seats so far. Next to the steering wheel on the Maserati, which looks really cool. I love the metal accents. You have nice, smooth leather that, again, feels uh, just a little cut above the rest, I think. Just really great feeling. Nice 9 and 3 grip. Nice, huge 10 and 2 notches that bulge out here very abruptly. Um, and uh, you have a few buttons here on the front. Uh, and then you have these awesome, large metal paddles that are mounted to the steering column, not the steering wheel, which I love personally. Um, and they're super thick. I think these are the heftiest uh, metal paddles I've experienced yet in a car review. Just really uh, awesome paddles. And so really nice to have all that. Next are the gauges in the Maserati Ghibli, which are very cool looking. I really love, uh, especially the blue accents you have there on the backgrounds, uh, and then you have the very cool looking needles. Everything about it just, it's very interesting looking gauges there for the two analog gauges. And then you have the digital portion there in the middle, which is where you start to see some of the FCA part spin stuff. Obviously, it's got a unique background and some different fonts, but very similar to the stuff that you see in other Fiat Chrysler products. But it's okay, because I think it's a really well done little center screen there. It gives you some of your basic uh, uh, vehicle parameters as well as like you know torque split which is really cool to have and a few other parameters there um, and uh, so a really nice uh, little gauge setup there I think the gauges overall are really well done Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, well first, right up top you have a very nice uh, analog clock here uh, with the Maserati logo on it, which is very cool. Coming down you have uh, what is basically the Uconnect touchscreen here from the Chrysler products uh, here in the Ghibli. And so, I mean, some people may turn their noses up at that, but uh, if you can't beat them, join them. The Fiat Chrysler you know, Uconnect touchscreen is one of the best out there and very quick, uh, very easy to navigate. And so why complicate things with Maserati trying to do it themselves? Use what's good. and uh, your set. So this is really uh, nice and quick, just like any other FCA application. You, again, have some unique look uh, looks to it with the uh, fonts and backgrounds and whatnot, um, so that you know it's definitely in a, in a Maserati here and not, you know, some lesser vehicle. But it's, you know, very uh, straightforward, easy to use. I don't believe it has CarPlay here for 2015. I think that was something they added, I think, 2016 um, or 2017. And so, uh, but still great nonetheless. And you have a little volume and tune knob there on each side. And uh, overall, really Really nice head unit actually. 
Coming down, you see your climate controls here, which have just a couple of buttons and uh, you know, a nice little uh, display there. Uh, and you can also control everything through the screen as well, as far as climate stuff goes. But very nice and simplified. You know, there's not a sea of buttons, just a few, and uh, that's really refreshing. And so uh, good to have all that. And then you just have a couple other buttons here for you know launch control, and you have your uh, gear shifter there, which looks similar to what you'd see in a BMW or something like that. And uh, nice to have all those little things right there. As far as storage space in the Maserati Ghibli, it's actually pretty good um, so anyway first thing in the doors here you have a nicely sized uh, pocket here you can fit as you can see uh, plenty of stuff in there no bottle holder there but that's okay um, coming over to the center here though you do have uh, two cup holders and you also have a power outlet there but the cup holders are on the small side um, you know larger uh, drinks would have trouble fitting in there um, you know things like cans of soda that's kind of what it's uh, sized for I think um, you know but I'm sure they work just fine as long as your bottle isn't super big and uh, then coming to the back here you have another little uh, pocket you can uh, fit some stuff in you also see an auxiliary jack and a USB jack in there uh, so good to have all that and I love this wood trim by the way you can actually feel the grain of the wood um, and just really nice stuff here and uh, it really feels high quality. Coming back, you have your center armrest, which is nice and wide and splits in the middle there, and it's nice and soft too. I mean, um, it doesn't feel super nice and uh, you know cushiony, but it does have a nice uh, little bit of give to it. Uh, anyway, you open that up, and then you have a pretty large and deep uh, center cubby that, uh, as you can see, it can be filled with lots of stuff here, um, and so very uh, practical in that regard uh, with lots of storage space in there. Backseat space in the Maserati Ghibli uh, is a little bit on the cozy side. Uh, you know, for a sedan of this class, um, I think some of the other competitors might have, you know, a couple more inches of leg room there. I'm five foot nine. Me sitting behind myself, I probably have about uh, three inches to spare there. Uh, so not tight by any means, but you know, if you're over six feet tall, you might start to feel a little cramped. A decent amount of headroom in the back there as well, though. Even despite the fact this car is a little more low slung than some of the others it's competing with, uh, I think it still is a good amount of space. You also have a full down center armrest, which actually does have another USB jack and power outlet in there, as well as uh, two cup holders and. Uh, uh, so nice to have that and overall it's a pretty comfortable back seat though and uh, you have some air vents there you know for the rear passengers and overall it's quite good trunk space in the Ghibli is massive I was really shocked with just how big the trunk is here in the Ghibli I would say that it's at least uh, the same as all the competitors might even be a little bit larger it's a uh, really an impressively long trunk and it's got a nice uh, flat load floor as well so you don't have to go up and over any kind of you know hump in order to get uh, stuff in and out of the trunk and overall Overall, a really nicely done trunk and uh, great size. All right, let's start up and go for a drive. The Maserati has this very thick and heavy key. It uh, really feels substantial, very cool key, uh, very unique you know, to Maserati here. And uh, anyway, uh, it's keyless entry and push button start, but the odd thing is the starter button is on the left-hand side, like a Porsche or something. Um, so anyway, you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button on the left and it starts right up. All right, so setting off in the 2015 Maserati Ghibli SQ4. So, uh, first thing you notice is uh, you have really great visibility here in the Maserati. You know, I mean, I have the seat up a little bit higher, um, but you know, the hood drops down nicely thanks to that sloped nose. Um, and view out of the sides is good with some pretty nicely sized uh, side windows. And view out of the back is actually quite good as well. So from a visibility standpoint, it's uh, very easy to drive. One thing as I'm using my turn signal here um, is the turn signal stock is right behind these awesome paddle shifters um, and so the paddle shifters as much as I love them get in the way a little bit of that turn signal um, just you know something to note but uh, other things here uh, well it's a uh, you know pretty nice thing to drive so far uh, you know nice and uh, smooth I will say though a normal mode here throttle response isn't quite as sharp as I'd like but we put we'll put it into sport mode here in a minute once we do some quicker driving and uh, you know see how that sharpens it up um, but in normal mode I mean it's really I mean these roads are in pretty good condition but you know it's very soft smooth uh, comfortable ride here like you would expect out of a luxury car the steering actually has a pretty good amount of weight too a little more than you know you might actually expect from a luxury sedan but again this is a sports sedan uh, first and foremost and uh, you certainly feel that here with the way that uh, you know the steering feels all right, so let's turn down on to this straight road here and see how it does. Here we go. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Listen to those crackles and pops. That sounds awesome. So 
Wow, the Mosworthy Ghibli Ghibli here has a three liter twin turbo V6 engine that does a stock 404 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque here in the S trim. But uh, this one has a tune and an air filter change. And so uh, the owner told me he's doing uh, around 490 horsepower. Um, I believe that's to the wheels. I think he said something like 530 to the crank and 540 uh, wheel torque. Um, so uh, <laughs> very quick, but anyway, stocks are the 60. These things will do uh, 4.7 seconds. Um, so very, very impressive, uh, you know, as far as uh, zero to 60 times go, you know, and right in line with a lot of the other competitors uh, of this caliber. But I had it in full auto that time, so we're gonna put it over into manual mode here and see how it does again. Here we go. <laughs> Man, that all-wheel drive system. <laughs> comes in handy because when those turbos pull up, man, they spool up. <laughs> and it has great pull, but you can tell it's definitely relying on those turbochargers to get this thing moving. Because um, these things aren't super light either. Actually, uh, I guess it's because of all the, you know, uh, higher end luxury materials in here. But these are quoted uh, weighing around 4,600 pounds which is a lot, like that's like 500 pounds more than some of the others out there. Um, so it's uh, not a lightweight. Um, so I think that's why, you know, you need the uh, extra grunt. And I think that's why, although this is, uh, you know, 404 horsepower even stock, it relies on those turbos because it's only a three liter V6. It's not a large engine, um, but you have the glorious uh, ZF eight speed automatic in this, uh, which is really nice and snappy with its uh, downshifts upshifts nice and quick too there's a little bit of an overlay there um, but overall uh, you know they uh, it's doing a pretty good job so far brakes also have a nice uh, amount of bite right at the top of the pedal there steering actually feels a little lighter now for some reason <laughs> but I just love the way that thing sounds it sounds so cool and really unique too. It doesn't sound like your typical, you know, German V6 or anything from even Britain. Uh, it's really a unique sound that I really love. It has apparently like Ferrari heads as far as, uh, you know, so the block is similar to some other FCA stuff, but then it's sent over to Italy and given some special treatment there. Um, and, uh, you know, it gives it this very unique sound and uh, the awesome performance that it has. And I will say, now in sport mode, the throttle response is nice and sharp. I mean, it's very immediate. As soon as I tip into the gas pedal there, I instantly get a little uh, bit of a thrust and a shove in my back. And so, very cool. But um, other things here. So, I'm on a pretty tight back road here now. And uh, it does feel a little bit large. I guess, you know, it just it feels a little wide, I guess. Um, but, you know, not in a bad way. But it uh, Definitely, I was thinking that the steering would get heavier uh, in sport mode, but it seems like it almost got lighter. It's kind of odd. Um, but I, I think the steering, it does uh, lack some feel. I wish there was a little more feeling uh, through the steering here. Because um, it's, I mean, I guess, you know, again, for a Maserati, they want it to be refined and a little bit isolated. Um, but it doesn't feel the sportiest uh, with, uh, you know, how it's lacking a little bit of feel and weight. Um, but it does handle very well, I gotta say. I think it's doing uh, 245 wide tires in the front, uh, and I believe in the back it's like a 265 or 275. So, um, yeah, it's a, a good amount of, uh, you know, grip. I would say there's a tiny bit of roll and lean to it. You know, it's not the uh, uh, firmest of rides, but again, we're talking about a luxury car once again, so you can't really expect that. But yeah, this thing is really fun, and I can see how it's just different, you know? Instead of just being uh, one of the rest, uh, you know, everyone goes out and buys the same luxury uh, sports sedans. Having something unique is really cool. And like I said, it, it's got all the good stuff. You know, it's got a quick transmission. You know, the ZF8 speed, can't go wrong with the ZF8 speed. One of the best automatics out there. Uh, the sound of the engine is great. The power is great. In sport mode, it's nicely dialed in. Um, you know, I, like I said, the steering is the only thing that uh, is lacking a tiny bit uh, in the experience. But I'm nitpicking here because this thing is definitely fun to drive, especially with this tune here. Uh, it gives it even more uh, drama and excitement. And uh, it's amazing though, this is still the stock exhaust. The only thing he changed was the tune in the air box. Um, otherwise, 
I mean, for a stock exhaust, it's amazing how good this sounds. I like that Maserati has the guts to give it a proper sound um, and not, you know, uh, have to rely on the aftermarket for that. And you don't even have to rely on a button either. You know, a lot of the other ones have a dual mode thing, which is also very cool. But I like that this is just like, nope, it's a good sound. It's not overly obnoxious. It just sounds great. Um, you know, it's uh, appropriate for the type of car this is. You know, it has some edge and some aggression to it, but not over the top, but uh, not too bland either. Just really a sweet spot here. Um, yeah, you certainly can feel the uh, weight in the corners. The more that I'm taking it around corner after corner here, the more that uh, the weight definitely feels apparent. Um, and it does have a little bit of wiggle to it, um, so that it, it does get easily upset a little bit. You have to be very smooth with your inputs, otherwise it feels like the spring rate is just a, a little soft. He also does have uh, some offset uh, spaces, I believe, on the wheels a tiny bit. I don't think that makes much of a difference, but just worth noting, uh, it does give it a nicer stance there, uh, you know, so the wheels aren't tucked in quite as much as they are from the factory. But, um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a fun thing to drive. It's definitely not the sharpest, you know, back roads carver, but again, we're talking about a Maserati here. This is supposed to be a nice blend of luxury, comfort, and sportiness. Uh, and you know, so I think it, it does straddle that all very well. I think this is definitely on the softer side, you know, when you compare it to uh, some of the others out there. Uh, you know, I would say that like uh, the BMW M550i, for example, I know that's a 2018 model, so that's got a couple of years on this. Um, but you know, something like that has a little bit of a better handling while still having a very soft ride. And so I think, you know, maybe in the later years they might have, you know, dialed that up a little bit better. Um, and so, you know, that's the only thing I would say, you know, if you wanted to improve the handling, that's also very easy, you know, just uh, some springs or anti-sway bar or something like that, I think would really help a lot. Another acceleration, because why not? <laughs> Yeah, there's certainly some turbo lag there. I've like put my foot to the floor and I wait a solid uh, couple of seconds there before it actually gives me um, all the power I'm looking for. But I do love, as I'm going around corners here, that these uh, you know paddles are mounted to the column, so I always know where to grab for them, um, and they are nice and large, so I don't have to shift my hands around a whole lot in order to uh, you know get the shift that I want. Um, and uh, so yeah, I mean, especially in manual mode here, it's really sharp. But we'll go ahead and put it back into drive and uh, let it do its thing. And so it does, you know, the turbos do come on nicely, and it, it does like to rely on those higher gears though, so. Even in sport mode, I wish it was a little quicker to downshift here, just with, like I said, the calibration of this ZF 8-speed. I will say, though, although, you know, uh, it does feel a little soft in the corners, uh, that certainly benefits you out on the road, because even whenever you're going over bumps and things like that, it is very smooth and very, very befitting of a luxury car. And so I think that, you know, that maybe there could be a sportier version that kind of puts performance a little higher than comfort on the priority list. But I think that overall, this is still really well balanced. And I think especially if you're not going to be attacking back roads in it, then it's just a really fun, uh, you know, uh, kind of Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing where it can just be the sleeper and just cruise in comfort. But then, you know, you uh, put your foot into it there and those turbos pull up and then it just wows you. Uh, and it wows you really well. <laughs> Another funny thing to note here about the Julia is uh, the looks that you get. It's amazing, even though this is a silver, you know, luxury car, uh, it doesn't look wild or drastic. Like, someone just gave me a thumbs up with that red light there, and it's like, people notice it. It's just, it's because it's a Maserati, and it has a presence to it. And I mean, maybe some people just look at the badge and automatically know from that as well. But, um, you know, it's just, there's something to be said. It's a cut above the rest. It's something you don't see every day. And I think that even normal, you know, non-car enthusiasts appreciate that <laughs> they just gave me a beep too they like the way it sounds so <laughs> yeah Maserati is a crowd pleaser and now just cruising on the highway that's uh, a really nice highway cruiser I don't think it's the quietest out there you know I think there's a little more tire noise um, than I was expecting honestly but otherwise it's uh, still a really nice comfortable again buttery smooth soft uh, suspension here so it's really great on the highway uh, just to cruise I mean you float along you don't really feel anything at all uh, at least on roads like this that are pretty well taken care of um, and so overall yeah I'm uh, really impressed here with the Maserati it's uh, like I said not the best of hand 
handlers, but you know, you already could have figured that out with the curb weight being as high as it is. But yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with the Maserati Ghibli SQ4 here. It's awesome because, you know, you can have this awesome sports sedan with the all-wheel drive to go along with it. And, uh, you know, it's uh, got pretty good performance as well. I mean, it's just... <laughs> You just do that and it just blows the doors off everything else around you and just uh, it's great fun and um, yeah I mean it's just I, it feels really good you know like I said aside from you know the transmission uh, could be a little bit smarter with figuring out I want to downshift and you know the suspension could be uh, firmed up a little bit steering weight could be a little better those are my only three minor critiques otherwise it's a fantastic car and just a fun cool different option like I said from all the rest out there um, I think that's for those who want to be unique want to stand out uh, with something that's you know got a, a very recognizable and very respected name as well that's uh, you don't see a whole lot Maserati uh, I think uh, overall, overall, it's a really uh, compelling package, and uh, you know the pricing of these can get high, but I mean, again, compared with what it's competing with, it's actually right in the same ballpark, and so you know nothing uh, to scoff at as far as pricing or anything like that goes. And I also wanted to add that used car pricing is even more impressive on the Ghibli. So let's look on Auto Tempest. Like I mentioned earlier, Auto Tempest searches all the major sites like eBay, Cars.com, and Auto Trader for you. Uh, you can even use it to compare results from all of Craigslist. And all of this ensures you don't miss any car so that you can have the best selection, you can get the best price, and do it all far easier than manually checking multiple sites yourself. So anyway, when we search for the Maserati Ghibli here, uh, you can see they're going for low $30,000 dollars even in with decent amount of miles on them you know nothing too high you know mid 30,000 miles uh, you know they're all low to mid $30,000 there's tons of them listed here too I mean that's the great thing with Auto Tempest you just get a ton of listings so you can really see uh, the entire marketplace for these vehicles I mean some of these are you know even under 20,000 miles it's just really really impressive I mean lots of colors everything it's pretty crazy uh, you know just how many are out there and they're very very affordable when you compare it to their over $60,000 you know new pricing to have it for basically almost half as much with just a few thousand miles and just a couple years old uh, really makes it a very impressive uh, value proposition as well um, so yeah, anyway, huge thanks once again to Jim for providing me with his awesome Maserati here to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on the Ghibli in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.